Hello my friends, today we're gonna take a look at the smoke alarm. The reason I decided to make a video about it because this is my old smoke alarm and it started making uh, chirping noises constantly or doing some false uh, triggering. So I decided to take it off first and understand what potentially can be wrong with it and if it needs replacement uh, replace it but um, if this is guy can uh, candidate to be thrown away uh, let's take a look what's inside so first disclaimer this guy is actually uses uh, americium 241 isotope okay and 0.9 micro curies of americium 245 so uh, obviously it contains radioactive material because this is old school I think this is uh, older school smoke alarm and it was produced in June 2nd whatever second day 1999 so uh, yeah, it's 20 years old so and uh, they obviously recommend replace smoke alarm uh, once a while every 10 years or something like that but as long as it was passing tests and things like that it was triggering by the kitchen smoke and uh, things like that I was keeping it a uh, few things may happen here first of all um, uh, probably the biggest problem uh, what I believe it's happened the dust actually collected inside the chamber and or dust and maybe cooking grease and uh, this was uh, detected uh, by the device as false positive and hence was chirping constantly so this is I believe what's happened because this device is still operates and americium 241 has uh, half-life of 490 years somewhat or something like that so it obviously uh, radi radiation detector is still operational anyways this is the uh, little small introduction here as you see this device this particular device uh, connected uh, by three prongs uh, over here and this is because it uses AC power to get powered I think AC DC or, or actually AC and one of them uh, one of those contacts, I'm not sure which one of them actually connected to other uh, smoke alarms across the house in order to trigger all of them simultaneously, which is kind of cool. But imagine like if one, for example, in the kitchen start beeping, like all of them in the basement, upstairs and everywhere in the garage, whatever, start beeping. Uh, so it's a uh, quite good feature, I think, which some uh, modern smoke alarms, which are not connected completely independent, are lacking. So anyways, let's take a look what's inside. Uh, so it doesn't have screws and has a whole bunch of clips. So I think I have to use some tools around here. Let's say I'm gonna use my favorite knife. Let's try to think. No, I don't even know how to do this. There is one, two, three, four clips. And I like to unclip using screwdriver and just think I'm gonna do it like this. I'm gonna unclip using screwdriver. And lift using knife. If you're gonna break, it's no big deal. It's no big deal. I mean, no, casing. Just turn the screwdriver. Ah, it's hard. One more time. Oh, okay. Okay, let's do it on this side. Wow, that's really hard. Okay, wow, that's easy. Manufacturer decided to really lock it down. Oh, okay, here we are. It's good. This kind of security devices obviously have to be as secure as possible. Pe to people not to play with them all the time, but here we are. I do play with it. Okay. So we have uh, upper case which contains all the mesh and the button here which engages us and understand this thing. So obviously as you see we don't have a battery. There is some sort of contraption compartment over here but there is no battery even space for the battery uh, yeah I don't know how this thing's supposed to operate and obviously because it's powered by 120 AC from just regular um, facility uh, power supply that means it doesn't have backup as I mentioned so in case of power outage I have no idea how this is gonna operate so we have a relatively simple PCB and I don't see any oh 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 here we are so there is a chip inside this cage 
So, the, okay, so let's look what we have here. The speaker, this is probably a loudspeaker that which creates this crazy loud buzzing sound. Uh, those guys looks like look to me like a power supply side of business. It's like a dropper capacitor. If it runs by 120 AC, the AC that means that uh, that's how it works. And there is a unit over here encased in steel or uh, metal cage, and it has radioactive material and americium 241. Uh, so. Okay, we can pop this device open. Okay, it looks like it's, it's... Oh, it just fell off! Oh, nice! So this device is... Uh, loudspeaker is connected by those three prongs, which is just the contacts. Cool, cool, cool. And uh, one, two, three over here. Alrighty, so now we have to pull PCB. Yeah, it's easy as well. I love this module construction because everything can be pulled super, super easily. Yeah, just like so. so here we are. At the end of the story, that's what we have. Now look at this burnout here. This is because... Eh, I guess this is because the... Oh, this looks like those diodes over here were heating up. One... It's like weird. Two... So this is look to look like to me um, power supply side of business. So let's take a look. I'm not sure which one is what, but uh, those three contacts over here in the bottom, one, two, three, goes somewhere around here. I assume. Yeah, I see marks. So oh, it's really hard to tell which one is what, but I assume. Be uh, I, I guess because there is a. Um, Isolation cutout over here. So capacitor this capacitor uh, This is mauve. I, I assume this is mauve, right? Is it? It's really hard to make out anything out of it Yeah Okay, and this big resistor over here is Mm. Just the current regulation? Jeez, like is it? Or it's a fuse, maybe fuse. F fuse, sort of fuse. So anyways, uh, here's capacitor dropper and this goes through the mouth, goes to this... Okay, uh, here's the one of the contour of capacitor and it goes over here and then, then it goes to the obvious rectifier diodes or... Uh, sorry, it actually goes to the zener, I think goes to yeah rectifier diodes there is a um, two diodes okay so this is power side of business uh, I won't be able to make out exactly uh, the uh, layout of all this stuff doesn't really matter so uh, this is, is have sort of power uh, power side of business here's two LEDs probably indicating the uh, operation of the guy and uh, what do we have here let me quickly take a look what those two LEDs do oh actually they are they are connected kind of differently one connected is like this and not cat out another is connected like that but that doesn't matter so here are two uh, LEDs yeah and inside the cage obviously cage is soldered so I won't be able to pull it out but inside the cage I see a sensor itself and uh, some sort of uh, component, it says A5348CA, it's a 14 pin deep package, uh, probably some sort of comparator or something, it's actually to, to uh, uh, process data from the uh, sensor itself so sensor what sensor is so ionization um, uh, smoke detector uh, do you want to go into theory yeah let's try to go into theory a little bit here okay so let's talk about theory uh, here so imagine this is our sensor so it consists of two plates and those two plates are uh, essentially uh, 
uh, anode and cathode, cathode of that of this cavity, and there is also radiation source over here. The, the specific design of the sensor it looks like it's a little bit different over here. I will draw it because I um, actually kind of look it up a bit closer. So here is radiation source. It's gonna emit some alpha radiation over here. So alpha radiation is relatively safe and safest type of radiation of all, and so it's gonna emit alpha um, uh, particles inside this ca cavity. So obviously it's filled with the air and because uh, alpha particles ionize uh, molecules of the air they would create some sort of electrical current which is going to flow through this sensor this electrical current is measured so when smoke particles are entering uh, this cavity or this sensor opening it they change and lower this current because of the uh, ionization obviously going to be different uh, so the, the, the difference between those um, initial level and the current level is what smoke detector detects if the uh, current drops assuming that uh, there is a there is a, some sort of threshold and assuming there is a, this threshold is breached it's gonna smoke it's gonna fire the the, the sound the alarm so this is essentially how it works uh, that's it this, this is the simplest thing and theoretically these devices uh, have uh, so this americium 241 have half-life but I don't think it's gonna be changing in any way of performing uh, over our lifespan so it's like 490 years of some sensor so this is not the part what's uh, not working this particular uh, smoke detector this is probably something else probably a pollution inside so imagine is all this stuff is filled is with some sort of crud and uh, smoke oil and other garbage and it doesn't really uh, detect current at all or get detect a super low level of current or it's a fluctuates by by whatever reason so that's why this thing cannot arm properly and chirping constantly this is my theory unless you guys think it's something else uh, please let me know but this is what i think so this particular uh, smoke detector looks rather like this so imagine uh, a circle like that with opening inside so so, so this is metal, this is metal, so this is going to be one electrode and there is another circle exactly underneath, similar to this one and inside there is a little tablet, so uh, this tablet contains americium 241 so essentially, and this is going to be another electrode, so this little tablet is what create ionization inside this chamber. Air, air comes through here, uh, create uh, obviously ionizes, create some sort of current inside the chamber, uh, inside this, and those two electrodes would have a little current flowing and be detected by electronic. Also, this device has a screw on the bottom, so this means that you can actually adjust the level of this little tablet containing the americium so by screwing the screw you can put it uh, closer or further away from the sensor probably this will affect sensitivity or more ionization or a level of ionization inside the chamber um, so this is how this particular sensor looks like and I think this fairly standard sensor what we possibly could have in those sort of uh, devices. So I think this is as simple as it can be with theory and uh, I think this is fairly clear how this device operates. What's not clear to me what exactly is the problem with uh, this particular device. If I won't be able to make it uh, work I will probably toss it away and replace it with something newer and the most bigger problem for me is that this particular device doesn't have a battery backup so if there is a power outage this is SOL so hope you guys find this sort of video interesting I, I uh, had the pleasure actually to take this apart because I wanted to do it for quite a uh, long time and figure out how this thing operates uh, if you find this interesting please, please like want to see more please subscribe and see you next time